I tried to explain to him, I said, I know a lot of stuff, but putting that stuff in action is what really gets me going where I need to go. And they said, oh, well, you ain't got to do this and you ain't got to do that. I said, I'd heap rather get to heaven and find out I didn't have to do something than to stand before him and realize that I wished I would have done something. Amen. Because he made me the way I am. He gave me this life. It's up to me to do the best I can with it. All my little circle of influence as I stood there and, and, and I began to talk to guys at work that I worked with, and they looked at me and they said, What's wrong, Bo? Man, I probably still had red eyes from crying all the way to work. And they said, What's wrong, Bo? Nothing. Well, you ain't laughing. You ain't cutting up like you used to. What's wrong? But I was tore. And finally, one of my good friends, I looked at him and I said, I think I'm going to go back to church. He said, What? I said, I think I'm going to go back to church. And he said, that's good. I had one of them tell me, he said, I liked you better when you was going to church. I said, well, thank you. But he was actually an older man, and he didn't mean it funny, and he didn't mean it disrespectful, but he was telling me in his own way that he was watching me, and I never knew it. You see, so many times we... I remember being a young person, being in church when I was here, and then walking out and not doing exactly, Brother Robbie, what I know I should have been doing. And leaving the place and, and, and the witness that you are. People are watching you. And I'll never forget, I came home from my senior trip to Florida. And I got home and I was in the back of the church one night and Brother Pollock and Lilburn, he was there. And he came back. We had some kind of fellowship and as I was sitting there, he walked up to me, Brother Gio, and he was crying. And he handed me a piece of paper. And he said, this is for you. Somebody sent it to me. And buddy, I got sick to my stomach. My mouth got dried. And I was like, oh, Lord. So I opened it up and the letter read about how proud this woman, which was a teacher, was of me. And she began to tell how even though all these other kids were doing all this other stuff on the senior trip, she said he was the most respectful. He tried his best to be the best he could. He lived exactly what he said he was on that senior trip. And then I started crying. Because, Sister Manning, that's what I wanted to do. My whole life, I've, I've not always done that. But you never realize the influence you have on people until you give up. You never realize who's watching you until you give up. And when you give up, Sister Judy, then you realize, and it's detrimental to you. And as I begin to think about me and Ashley, my children, my children, number one, because the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it. I looked at my babies and I held them when they was all sleeping, all three of them, and I told God, I said, God, I know I ain't living right. I know I'm not where I need to be, but you give me each and every one of these babies. I said, God, and I'm asking somehow, some way, that you please use them for your kingdom. I remember pictures of my mama standing, holding me when I was a baby, giving me to the Lord. A lot of you under the sound of my voice, your mothers, grandmothers held you and give you back to the Lord. We need to get back to that. Not just a physical act, but in prayer. Saying, God, use my family. Because if we don't pray for them, Brother Robbie, somebody out there is going to get them. And as I looked at my babies at night, I would cry. My wife would be asleep. I'd be walking the floor. I'd be looking at my children. And I, I begin to realize, my God, I love these babies more than I love myself. I love them so much. And then the thought, I love you that much. And then I stood there in my bedroom. 
and tears began to run down my face. And I stood there and I began to realize, you know, that's right. Nothing I've done in these past ten years has amounted to a hill of beans. But when I walked back down to that altar, I told Mama then when I come to church, I said, hey, don't mess with me. Don't nobody touch me. I don't want nobody doing all this. And don't touch me. I know the ropes. I got this. And I said, I'm going to do it when I feel like I need to. And as I stood there, I couldn't stand there anymore. I held onto that pewter. I, I think I left fingerprints in it. My knuckles was white. But I said, God, you've been mighty good to me. And I ain't been too good to you. And I said, if you'll forgive me, I'll try my best to never let you down again. And I walked down to that altar, Brother David. And when my knees hit the floor, it was right, right, right back on the wagon again. I said, thank you, Jesus. And all the weight and all the hurt and all of the pain and everything that I'd been carrying for 10 years was gone just like that. And I'm here to tell you, these last three, four years, they ain't been a bed of roses. But you see, when I kneel down in prayer, He's there. When I call upon Him in my day of trouble, He's there. When I'm scared and I don't know what to do, Brother Bobby, and I say, God, help me, He's there. When the doctors say there's no hope, He's there. When you're all alone, laying in your bed at night, your husband don't know, your wife don't know. Your friends don't know. He knows. All you have to do is give it all to Him. There's a song that says, I will give you all. I will give you all. If all is what you ask of me, I will not withhold. But if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best, help me remember Calvary's cross and be willing to say yes. God, help me to never forget the price that you paid for me. Help me to never forget what you've done for me. The life that you lived for me. And all that you did that I might have life and have it more abundantly. And in closing tonight, I ask of you one thing. I want you to really think. 